Oh, she was very intrigued with you. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Um, but then you said that nothing happened for a long, because there was a long distance. Long, or no, nothing. She was very intrigued by young Daddy. Nothing happened. Long distance, you looked at each other. Then you asked her to a movie. Yeah, well, that's, that was the first thing that we did. So go to a movie. Okay. And Betty came from a family of 16 children. Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Her mother had two children with her first husband, and he died. And then with her second husband, she had 14 children. Two sets of twins. Wow. And you said that they were a very close-knit family. Oh, yes. They were one for all and all for one. And, and it says the father hammock. I'm not sure. Oh, the father. Uh, I mean, at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What I call it. Her father worked for the Hamachek Machine Company in, in Kiwane. Mm -hmm. And her, she had two brothers working there, too. And uh, her father, had, as he was older, uh, by the time I got came to Kiwani, and uh, so they, it's, it's, he wasn't able to work in the shop anymore, so they made him the, the night watchman. And uh, the, the company had uh, three buildings, all, all in different sections, so he had to go through all those three buildings every hour. Well, as, as he got older, his legs gave out. <laughs> in, where he could go, go through those three buildings at one time and still have maybe about 15 minutes rest before he had to make the next one. It got to the, bad, to the point where he finished one round and he'd have to go on right away into the second round. So the children helped him out the, the, in this, especially in the summertime. They, the, the older boys would make the rounds for him, and especially at later at night. And then earlier on, the older girls would, would go uh, and make the rounds at, at the early part of the night, like in the summer when it was still light out. And then the boys would go through there. And the, the, the man that owned the company, Mr. Hamachek, do what they were doing, and he, what I call it, was so uh, thrilled that they were able to help out their dad in that way that he never said anything at all until once it finally got to the point where it, it, it was, he could hardly get to work, and the boys almost had to carry him to work <laughs> to get him there, but he didn't want to give up. so. Mr. Havinchuk came over to uh, Mrs. to uh, his wife's home, which was close by, and uh, told her that they were going to fire her husband. And he said, "But we're not really going to do it. But we're going to tell him what we're going to fire him because it's the only way we're going to get rid of him." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he, he uh, got his pension and everything that he. Deserved. But the funny thing was, he said, oh, now I'm going to do, do the firing and the next morning. He said, and, uh, knowing Frank, he said, he's going to be mad or not what happened. But he said, that's the only way we're going to get rid of him. So they fired him the next morning. And about the, when, when he was about a block away from where they lived, you could hear him already. He was, oh, this and this and this. He was so mad. And he finally came in the house and he sat down and he says, you would never believe it. He says, they fired me after all these years. <laughs> and Mrs. River just sat there and she says, well, all right, if you can't do the job, you got to, Take them. They're, they're not going to pay you 
for sitting around all day long. So they finally got him to cool down, but it took a long while before he finally got over the idea that they had fired him. Now, when you married your wife, since you can, or was this you, I'm not sure, it says, you can marry my daughter, but I'm going to marry her anyhow? No. No, no. Let me go. All the boys warned me. To, oh, that, uh, okay, they speak. can't hear you anymore. Anyway. There you go. All, all of the boys warned me that the brother in laws, that they all went through the same deal when they wanted to marry his daughter. They, they'd come and say they'd like to marry his daughter. And he'd say, well, you can have my daughter if you can be as good a man as I was. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you mentioned the, the children. So all of us just said, no, we're not going to match that. Yeah. So I went through it. He, well, Harold, you did not marry Betty, but you got the proof that you could be as good a man as I was. I said, no, I'm not going to be as bad as you were. Mm -hmm. And you were engaged for a year and a half. Yeah. Okay. You, that's... Right. And then, so then uh, you became, so your wife and you got married, and then she was a stay-at-home mom, and you were uh, the uh, principal, teacher, yeah, music so, teacher. All of that. All of that. All of that. And then, um, let's see. So your wife always knew where you were. Yeah. And then, um, so then, tell us about your children here. So, My children? Uh huh. They were they were in school. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So well, tell us your oldest, your youngest. You know. Yeah, Ned's the oldest. Ned, Ned's the oldest. And, uh, um, the second child is a dear, he's a uh, Lee, he lives in Milwaukee, he's retired. All my boys are retired now, except John. He's the bachelor, everyone? Yeah. Bachelor. Still working. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Lee is, uh, is what I call the second one after, after uh, bed. And then the uh, third one is Todd, and he lives in North Carolina, New Bern, North Carolina. He was, uh, after school was out, he wanted to be a, and join the Marines. And my, my wife said to him, are you really sure that you want, why don't you wait a year and if at the end of that year you still want to be a Marine, I won't object. So, Todd, what do you call, agreed. So for a year he stayed, but when that year was up, he came down and said, Mom, my year is up. And, uh, I'll, I'll, I still want to be a Marine. And so she, she said, well, I'll keep my bar. End of the bar, and then he did. And he stayed in the Marines for 24 years. Oh, oh my wow. God. And uh, he, he retired as captain in the Marine Corps. And then you uh, you played the like the pipe organ. So now when you retired from teaching, then did you just continue on as an organist? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so you were a church organist for 64 years. Yep. Wow. And uh, you were at six different churches? Yep. Yeah. I was at Kiwani, Wisconsin, and I was principal at, at uh, St. John's in Milwaukee. And then uh, I went from Milwaukee to Green Bay to Wausau. 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 Wani Walk. Wani Walk. I can never remember. Wani Walk? Wani Walk. Where is Wani Walk? <laughs> it's over in the Dells there. Oh, okay. Yeah, Wani Walk, I was there one. That's when my wife became very ill. And uh, the doctors told me I had to go to 
to an area where there was better uh, health care. So we, we went back to Milwaukee, and we, we were in Milwaukee until she died. And what do you call it? She had uh, experienced six bypass surgery. She almost died on the table after two surgeries, two, two by, they did two bypasses, and that's what the nurse said, if, it, if anybody is in the round, you better come home right now. So Ned and John were teachers, and uh, they, they had stayed at school to teach, so we called them, and I, I don't know if that John is alive today, because we just about called him, and the next thing we knew, he was at the hospital already. He really had to take long. <laughs> so, and then I, I saw my wife at 6.30 in the morning. They took her up to the, to the, in the room in the surgery, and I didn't see her again until 10.30 on that, that night. Uh, Chris was, was the one but we didn't ex explain to Chris what to, to expect after the surgery. But poor Chris, she just about died when she saw my wife. She just <laughs> couldn't take it. She ran out of the room crying. Yeah. She, she was so uh, upset. <laughs> 